go ahead and get started. I'm really happy that we were able to get Andon Bull to come and talk to us. She is the COO of Palomar. Uh, it's a fairly new organization that is there to help families and um, victims of domestic abuse and a variety of other things. Uh, it, it's a phenomenal program where they have really pulled together a lot of resources to help people. And it, I just can't give it enough accolades. And we also have Reverend Janie Kurt Morris with us, a uh, retired Episcopal priest who is very active down there as well. And so it's a pleasure to have both of them here to help present about Palomar. And it, it sounds like all of us have encountered in some way or form throughout our ministries, uh, domestic abuse or, or things of that nature. And just the other week, I had a, a lady from the neighborhood stop in and I shared this story a little bit uh, in the email, but she, she was lost. She didn't know where to go, where to turn. Um, she had just thrown what she could into a bag and she left. She had just re reached that point where she just had to get out and, and she had enough courage to do that but, um, and if it wasn't for the fact that she could find that support and, and somebody that could say, Here, here's an organization that you can turn to that will give you the support that you need. Um, I, I, I'm not sure that she would have had enough courage to stay gone uh, the way she talks sometimes. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I, so often um, women in these situations end up going right back into the same um, abusive relationship, or they find uh, another relationship that is very similar uh, when they don't have resources available to them. And that's one of the things that I think is so wonderful about Palomar. And so with that, I'm turning it over to Andon, and, and thank you for being here. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Um, I am Andon Bull, I'm the CEO here at Palomar. I'm a very informal presenter, so I just have a few slides, but if there's any questions, comments, feedback, please stop me. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions, and I know Jamie and I will answer questions at the end. Let me see if I can find how to share my screen. It would help if I didn't have so many windows open, right? <laughs> All right. So, um, like Ray, I think you mentioned one safe place. There's several family justice centers in the state. Palomar is focused in Oklahoma City. Um, and the family justice center model really is a one stop shop for victims. And so, we are here to bring agencies in our community together to provide wraparound um, services for our clients. And so, here you can see the different victimizations. Um, that we serve. Obviously, domestic violence is our major focus. Um, since we did bring up child abuse a little bit coming into this, I did want to mention also our Camp Hope program that we do each year. And so that program focuses on kids 8 to 16 that have either witnessed or been victims um, themselves. And we take them to a week-long summer camp each summer. That's curriculum-based, evidence-based summer camp um, for traumatized teens. And then we also do year round programming with them. Um, so we like to say that we do life with those kiddos. Um, and it's a really amazing experience. And we do that on top of just our everyday services that we provide here at our facility. So here's just a little bit of an overview of just a few of the services that our partners and our staff provide. Um, so we have we started with 15 partners, we're up to 36. So you can see that this is a vast array of services that we can provide to our clients. Um, going back to the story that you shared, Reverend, I think that transportation is a huge one and that people need to know about and that we have an amazing partnership with Embark. And so we have a dedicated van for our clients. And so we can actually, if a client calls us, we can go pick them up out of an emergency situation and bring them here to receive services. Um, so I think that's something that's really unique to our agency and really fills a huge gap for our clients. Um, so when they are in that, I'm packing my bags, leaving situation, we can help them get here and get them to safety. 
Um, like I said, we're now up to almost 37 partners, which is amazing when we started at 15. So you can see here, there's just a little bit of a snippet of the partners that we have. So it's everything from law enforcement, district attorney's offices, advocacy agencies. You'll see there's several family agencies here as well. Um, we're really focusing on bringing more counseling and therapy services right now. So we've increased those services dramatically in the last few months. Um, with the pandemic, the need for mental health services has just dramatically increased. So that's been a priority area for now. Um, but yeah, it's really amazing to see how many partners we've been able to bring together just over four years since we opened. Um, this is a little video that one of our clients um, shared with us, and I love to share it because I think it just is a real life impact of what the power of all of our partners can get together can do. So I'll play this for you all. Please let me know if you can hear it. They took my son, uh, domestic violence and drug use in the home. And my safety meeting with DHS, my caseworker's boss, I wanna see you at Palomar in three days. I will come get you, do whatever it takes. It took me the full three days to get here, you know, um, to get away from dad and to, to get here. Um, but once I started, I started counseling with LaDonna over the chance to change here. And it slowly, over a couple weeks, came all together for me. Um, you know, the domestic violence got worse, of course, after they took my son. And um, I, I went to a DHS here with a black eye and the next week, and that was my son's birthday week. They wouldn't let me see him for his birthday. And the next week, I went to go see him. We brought his present and we brought his toys. But my whole face was bruised. So of course they wouldn't let me see him again. It was going on the third week that I had to see him. And, uh, I couldn't take it anymore. I couldn't de-escalate my husband anymore. And I contacted DHS and LaDonna and said, if I leave him tonight, can I see my son tomorrow? And I got to see him here in the playroom. And it was just so wonderful. And after that, you know, you guys let me see him here every chance I got. In the beginning, it was two hours a month. And then slowly we got to the point where last month he came home. I, I wake up every day hopeful and happy. You know, then when I was in it, I prayed for death. I didn't know what else to do. If it wasn't for Alabama and the YWCA and the legal aid, I don't know where I'd be. I, I didn't come out here last year, even though I was a client at Palomar, because I didn't have him. And it was going to be too hard. This year, he was so excited, and I wouldn't have missed him for the world. I actually just saw a picture of that first visit I had here with my son a year ago. And, uh, I look completely different. I can't believe how broken I was. I don't know how much stronger I am now. Yeah, so I think Lisa's story just really shows how powerful it is when a client can come to Palomar and all of the services that they need are here and that we can really um, wrap around them and provide the services that they need. Um, the slides on here obviously to say that all of our services are free of charge. Um, we've actually even increased our legal capacity to have a legal network for pro bono legal. Um, and then of course, everything we do is confidential. Um, and then this slide just is also to talk about, we also are very client driven. And so 
everything here is up to the client. Um, I know you all know that it's complicated dynamics and domestic violence. And so we really feel strongly about letting the client express their needs and drive what resources and their path. Um, and then with that, I, this is another video that Janie actually found. So I'll play this for you and then give Janie an opportunity to speak a little bit about um, what we're doing on the spiritual care side for our clients. You hear all these stories about domestic violence and you think, oh, that couldn't be me. It's you more times than you realize. He beat me for his entire lunch hour. I was told that my husband got angry that it was my fault, that it was something that I did to anger him, to upset him. When we got home, there was this barrage of disapproving filth that came out of his mouth. I don't know what triggered him. You just never knew what might trigger him. I remember thinking, as long as he doesn't hit me, it's not abuse. I was beaten so bad when I was pregnant, my face was disfigured. My uncle, the minister, said God didn't create you to be abused. And that really meant a lot to me. I lost, lost my home. I lost my child. I lost my personal belongings. I lost myself. My inner self. Somebody hit me. Cause it can't seem to break free. Really see from all this pain I feel. I have come to understand that when I cried, God cried. And when I laughed, God laughed. And when I found my way through, it was because God was leading the way. As I began this journey. Okay. Thank you, Andon. Of course. And so Daniel has already introduced me. I when I retired from active leadership from West, uh, a church out in West part of Houston, it was natural I would return to Oklahoma, my native state, where both of my adult children happened to end up as with their lives, careers, families here in Oklahoma City, yay. So when I arrived, um, I began to explore not only where to have fun in this new part of my life, but also where to have, where God wanted me to use my experience and my, who I am. And it was a definite, for me, one of those mysterious things. We can't explain it all, but uh, I was certainly led to Palomar, one of the president of their board. I saw at a Muslim event I was attending and she said, come on over. And after that, you know, I, I began to be at Palomar, required training extensive before being there on a regular basis. Um, so yes, you're quite right of the extensiveness. Before pandemic, the estimate was about one in four women had experienced violence. I'm going to focus on domestic violence, though we treat lots of other as you've seen, lots of other victimizations. Um, and lots of men, sadly, too, one in six, though they are not as frequently showing up to get help with us. Um, let's start my PowerPoint, yeah. So I'm at Palomar, and let's go to begin my slideshow, Daniel, with the next one. The facts are that we would like to be in denial and say it must be over there, somewhere else. People that aren't educated or 
are poor or something we, or different colors of skin than I am, but that is not the case. The calls that come to the police come from every neighborhood. I've heard our, our executive director say that if you stood on the front porch and looked down the street, there would be a home in which there was domestic violence had happened or is currently happening. So every economic and educational level, every race in our, in our metropolitan area. I, in my personal experience at now serving as a spiritual care provider, for example, I've met uh, women who, well, one who as many no longer have a home. So they're couching on a friend or with a family member. One woman I've met with in person living with her mother, um, but still struggling a, a great deal and being helped by some of our partners. So she's poor, um, but I also met with a woman who was the wife of a bank vice president. Uh, white skin, European American like you, most of us. Um, so we, next slide. So we have been, as Andon said, in operation a little over four years. And while we have exact uh, figures, if you want them sometime, we know that we've helped over 10,000 individuals. Wow. Um, the, we call it a collaboration. So in the building that we're now leasing, maybe some of you are aware that Palomar was on the last list for MAPS 4 that Oklahoma citizens voted yes to fund. So in some future year, we'll be uh, creating, building our own facility down in Midtown where we now are also functioning. Um, but the collaboration as um, Andon referred to, the staff of Palomar runs the building and then upstairs are officed many, many of our partners. Of course, with pandemics, some of them are still staying away, working uh, by distance. A lot of that adaptation took place. Let's go ahead. So our mission is first and foremost protection, and you'll see the word safety in a little bit. But then underpinning everything, as Andon referred to, and as you've heard from the video is we want in everything we do to provide hope and healing. So we deal with, next slide, we want to deal with the person that arrives on our doorstep, the whole person. And Palmar had certainly already well attended to the body and mind parts of people. When I arrived two years ago about, um, we had not yet gotten to focusing on the spirit, but let's look at in body then, next slide. We know that safety and security are first. I've sat in on the intake uh, sessions that our Palomar navigators and others provide, listening to their stories. And so, as you might expect, safety comes in helping someone go into a shelter. That may be a YWCA shelter. It might be city rescue or others where they can stay for a while as they sort out where they can be on longer term, but safe to be safe. And then we tend to the body in health ways. Uh, county health offices uh, provide services on site in Palomar. Um, as our executive director tells the story, she used to work in the police department as a social worker. She was there. She said she would hand out nice brochures to mostly women who came in and needed services and they would have to find a way to drive all over to get those services. Now they are right on site. They sit in a wonderful consulting room people come to them. The whole Department of Domestic Violence for our Oklahoma City Police Department is housed on our second floor. They come to the 
to the client. They no longer have to go to a police office. Um, so they're watched out for in their health and nutrition, always thinking of hope and healing for them. Also then, next slide, uh, we certainly tend to the well-being of their minds. One thing they've not had is a healthy perspective on what's going on. As that woman on the video said, she lost herself, isolated, controlled. Um, so one of the things we aim at is to provide a healthy perspective and begin to give them some hope uh, that they, they have choices like Andon referred to it is we help them know their immediate options we offer empowerment and then and introduce possibilities for a new future but they make the choices they have to say yes as they hear those choices and sometimes they're able to quickly and sometimes it takes a while uh, to come but underpinning all of that again is hope and healing for them and then when I arrived and began to focus, let's go to the next slide. On the spiritual side, um, when I first was there, I just had to learn, learn a lot about the collaboration, how we function. I went out to visit numerous of our uh, partners in sight, on their sites, um, began to look at what other family justice centers were doing across our nation. And, um, you know, we're not a Christian organization. We are a nonprofit. And so I approached this definitely of listening for where our clients are. My experience by talking to clients by phone and in person is that most of them have been connected with Christianity. You won't be surprised with that but that connection has been both good and poor. Uh, you might not be surprised by that either. But I found that the important things for me, and now I'm just beginning another volunteer is coming, I'm happy to say, I've gone through training, but we are listening deeply. You do that. We're listening deeply and we are believing them. They've been in a horrifying life where they were told what to believe, told what was real, and to help them when they have been desperate enough to come and say, spill out their story to believe them. And I, I've heard their faith experiences, um, you know, how I'm supporting them in their healthy connections with the holy, the divine one, However, that has come, can come to them. In my sessions, both on phone and in person, I ask them, I tell them that I'm a praying person and would they like to have me pray and open some silence up for them to pray. Most often they want me to, but I hope hold out that silence for them, whether they are desiring to voice something aloud or just inside. Um, but I do ask permission for that. And I do also check with them if where they're coming from uh, in their own life. I had a, uh, I've had a, a woman, a client I met with in person recently say to me at the end of our session, you really got me. She had been heard in ways that she, she had been heard already, certainly by our Palomar staff, but this was a, another way of being heard that was very important to her. I'm sorry to say that for some, their, their, their abuser has misused scripture, misused uh, faith um, remarks. I had one, this has been before I was at Palomar, but you probably, I'm sorry to say, may have had something like this. I had a teenager come to me. When they would get home from church, father would get out the paddle that had scriptures on it and beat them. Misusing those scriptures about obedience and misusing um, teachings to lay on the victim 
shame and guilt, lots of shame and guilt to be overcome in their healing that we offer hope and healing. There's a lot of, when I first arrived, I was at when we, back when we could be together in person, uh, I was at a, an event inside Palomar of all the partners were invited for a, a lunch or something and some of us were there. I was sitting by one of our wonderful YWCA advocates and when she asked me what I was there for and I told her briefly, she said, oh, I'm so glad. She said, that often is the, faith is the last thing our clients are holding on to. Wow, that was, that resonated big. But I'm, I want to tell you that likely in your congregations, in those that you come into contact, there are families coming who look real happy, look real together, look real faithful. And I'm sorry to say that those good appearances may be put on to hide the truth that no one is allowed to tell. Let's go to the next slide. So often the first person a victim will tell is you, a faith leader that they trust. So let me just summarize for you the most unhelpful response is to not believe them. That is so damaging. They have come out of something, a place so dangerous. And when they come and spill out their story, listen and believe. And please never, the worst response is to send them back into their abusive relationship. But I'm aware, I know that sometimes that happens in a faith leader of any tradition has encouraged them to work on it more, to pray more, however it's phrased, but send them back. And that can be extremely dangerous, even to the point of the victim being killed. The best response, as we've already said to you before, is to listen and to believe. They have not been believed and they've not dared to say, but listen and believe, and then connect them with resources for their safety and support. I'll give you those in just a bit. Um, so let's go to the next slide. So the way to get help from Palomar, here's the basic phone number, 405 1010 they can walk in and often clients are dropped off by a family member or a friend or sometimes by the police officer. I met one day with a woman who had been dropped off by the Spring Lake, a patrol car, been picked up off the street where she had fled from an apartment. She was very distressed. I met with her in a private room just to help her be able to tell her, begin to talk to our staff and tell her story. So walk-ins are fine. We don't have to ever have an appointment come in. They come in and fill out uh, information and then are seen by one of our intake, wonderful intake people. And on our website, there's our web website, palomarokc.org. Under get help now are other options. So, I don't think I have, do I have any other things up? I think I have those photos, don't I? Yeah, I sent uh, Daniel these. We've got some good paper material. <clears throat> um, and so the one flyer has got some basic how to help. I can put these, <coughs> Daniel's gonna help me know how I can leave these through Pam at the, your central office. This would be good whether you're in Oklahoma City or Shawnee or wherever you are. You know, this one on one side says how to help. <laughs> on the other side are the barriers listed. No, no, don't show that one yet. No, no, let's go back. To that. <laughs> Each of them has an opposite side. So they're really good learning. And I hope some of your colleagues who could not be on this uh, Zoom call today can pick up these and get some of the basics. 
The other one, and I'm going to make uh, give copies of these too, is warning signs of unhealthy relationships. That's just real good basic stuff for you to be aware of or for anyone, a family member or anybody. The opposite side of that one that is not shown has a list of what healthy relationships are like because as you may well know, a lot of this stuff is generation to generation. One client lately said, I know my husband grew up in this kind of home. That's all he knows. But she knew she needed to get out of it. So to learn what a healthy relationship will help a, a client not repeat it, which you're correct, you who said it often is, they go right into another similar relationship. Uh, but we want to help them learn. Now let's go to that other one, that last one. So I've put up, I'm going to also make available this power and control wheel, which shows how power and control is exerted in all these different ways. When you get one of these, the opposite side of this has a wheel that shows healthy relationships. So in, you know, sexual, physical ways, economic, um, all the ways that the verbal. So we want to give you resources that you can use. In pre-pandemic times, I had begun to do uh, open house for faith leaders. Uh, we've not been able to do that, but we look for when, once again, we can be open to the public, that I'll resume having open houses one evening where you can see the location, learn more, or encourage your colleagues to attend one of these. Thanks for having us. Uh, Anna and I are open for questions and answers. We'll try to do some answers. <laughs>